I guess I'm gonna just like awkwardly use my hands and shove it in. I feel like a thief. I went somewhere and I'm just like stealing someone's plate of food. <laughs> They're coming. They're coming. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? My name is Brian Ford, also known as Arson Brian, TV show host, baker, and cookbook author. And today, we're gonna make some pupusas. Pupusas, it's pretty much just a way of life. It's very simple food, like, you know, a lot of staple foods in Latin America. We're gonna make this pupusa dough first. We're using today some uh, maseca, cornmeal mixture, very, very prevalent in Latin American households. So we're gonna mix that with some salt and some warm water. And the cool thing about maseca is it's got a little bit of leavening agent already in it. Use our hands, all right, nice clean hands, you know what I mean? Don't be afraid. Ooh, that's some nice, that's some nice warm water. You wanna feel the warmth when you're making it. Just like that, nice and simple. You don't wanna overwork it either. This is a nice consistency here. All right, this is what you're looking for. It's not sticking to my fingers. I can press down on it, all right? Again, the smell, the aroma is intoxicating. You know, this is just like Latin American blood right here, you know what I mean? This is what we're made of, so. All right, we're gonna let this rest. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the beans, all right? Refried beans, very important part of making pupusas. Got some red beans that I've soaked overnight. So we're just gonna strain these and get them boiling. All right, so it's gonna be, be very simple. We're gonna put some water in the pot, get it to boil. I mean, they can boil for three hours, four hours. If you don't like beans, and honestly, I can't, don't talk to me. All right, don't try that at home, it's a hot bean. But what I'm looking for is just, all right, the ability for the bean to just dissolve in my fingertips, right? So they're ready to go. I'm gonna strain them out. I wanna reserve just some of the bean liquid for the refry process. I'm gonna take these and give them a little shake, you know, make sure all that liquid goes down, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna refry these beans. All right, we got our uh, fry pan here, it's getting hot. We're gonna cut up some white onion. It can absorb and give out flavor, you know what I mean? And some butter. Simple, simple flavors. I used to have a cooking club in college. I would be sauteing in onion and garlic, and bro, people would be flocking in like, what are you doing? I didn't do nothing special. It's just an onion. I'm gonna hit them for a few minutes until they're nice and brown, not too brown, nice and soft, you know? I'm gonna add a little bit of bean juice. Just a little bit, not too much. That has flavor in it, just, just from the bean. I just want this to get a little bit thicker before I add the beans. Look at that, that's beautiful. So now we're gonna add our beans in. It's like I'm at home right now. Before we start mashing, I'm gonna get some more butter in there, a little more bean juice. We don't want it to dry out. Nobody likes a dry bean. Some cumino, some cumin, as they call it. I call it cumin. I never knew, somebody told me something about cumin once. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? I was like, Brian, cumino. I was like, oh. We're gonna add some salt, add some freshly cracked black pepper. Now we're gonna mash these. All right, my mom used to use a potato masher like this. I think it's a potato, I used to call it a bean masher until someone told me it's a potato masher. I'm like, pretty sure I mash beans with this my whole life, so. It smells incredible. Bean mashing is my workout for the day. You work out, you get rewarded with beans. We're gonna end up putting these in the food processor to get them smooth later on, so once you get to this consistency like this, you can set these to the side, remove them from the heat, and we're gonna move on now to make the cortito. All right, half a head of cabbage here, and we're gonna kind of shred it a little bit. This is a form of pickling uh, different vegetables, all right, and in Latin America, you have many different forms. You, in cortido, cortido. Um, you know, in Mexico, there'll be a different one. In Honduras, there's a different one. In El Salvadorian cuisine, uh, the cortido is it's heavy, heavy cabbage base. So we got some water that's simmering, all right? Blanching is a, a, a way to kind of soften up the cabbage, just taking a little bit of that crunch away, but we don't really want to boil it and cook it. Our cabbage is nice and, and blanched here, so we're gonna remove it, we're gonna strain it. Ooh, man! We wanna pat this dry, remove as much moisture as possible. All right, so our cabbage is nice, our serrano chiles. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get these cut, we'll peel the carrots. They add color, they add a nice crunch, you know, and they're carrots. The pickle well. So we want our carrots uh, thinly sliced. So I would use a cortido for anything that's fatty and salty because that acidity is gonna add a texture that's gonna contrast it and a flavor that's gonna balance out your bite. We're gonna use one garlic clove here. I grew up in New Orleans in a hundred household. So food was just the number one priority. All right, we're gonna hit the onion, and some slices. Some, some of this oregano here. Add just to add a little bit of a, an, you know, an herb situation there, right? Give it a little toss, add the cabbage. So we're gonna use one of these extraordinarily large mason jars. <laughs> gonna look nice for y'all. All right, so I'm using apple cider vinegar here to start you know, the pickling process. 
Mm. Oh, so, so good. All right, so we're gonna cover it with the lid. Don't eat a pupusa if you don't have any curtido. All right, this is just a fact. Here's the curtido mixture, all right? Beautiful balance of color. The orange, the green, not too much of any one thing, but the cabbage is gonna dominate. And so we're gonna let this sit for a couple hours. Then we're gonna hit it in the fridge, preferably overnight, so that acidic flavor can really develop. We're gonna now make a salsa for the pupusas. We got a little oil. I've got a poblano here. I've got a jalapeno, serrano, bell. Got different peppers. And you don't really even need to uh, cut them up or anything. I'm gonna remove the top. I'm gonna keep the seeds in because I want my salsa to have a kick to it. Just put it on there like that. Oh, this is gonna get dangerous. You ain't know I was gonna do it like that, huh? I'm about to have seeds flying all kind of way. Protect your eyes. We're gonna use just half of the bell and we're gonna use half the onion. Most people associate salsa with just Mexican cuisine and, and not realizing that there's a strong salsa tradition in all of Latin America. This is gonna help with the cortido to add a little heat uh, to the bite um, and just a little bit more balance as well. So I'm gonna get these tomatoes into some boiling water so that they can soften up and I can remove the skin. And I'm going to puree that with some chicken broth to create like the base of the salsa, you know? Tomato, duh. All right, so the tomatoes are gonna go in there for a few minutes. We're gonna, we're gonna be very careful about our maneuvers over here. And some tongs, tongue catch, all right? So what, what we really wanna do is char these peppers, char the onions, soften the skin up a little bit, and the onions. Ooh, there's nothing like a nice charred onion like that, just like a whole onion, just like that. You could remove the layers and just throw them in there. That way, you're not just hitting the outside of one layer. All right, we got some garlic. Just to, oh, look at that, landed in the onion. All right, we're gonna let that ride. We're gonna check on the tomatoes. The skin's already coming off, which is, look at that, it's already doing it by itself. So we're gonna chill it down here. So this is gonna chill for like two seconds. Skin off the tomatoes. We're gonna add this to the food processor. All right, then we're gonna add some chicken broth here. Now we're going to puree the tomatoes with the chicken broth. I'm gonna pulse with one hand and check on the peppers with another hand. We got a nice char. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. Tomatoes are pureed with the chicken broth. We're now gonna add our peppers and onions to the food processor as well. Now we're gonna puree. I kind of want it a little chunky. Ooh, that's business right there. This is, this is, you know, you gotta bring your briefcase. You know, this is a formal meeting. So we're gonna go back into the pan here. Salsa has got a nice color. Cook it down a little bit, salt. All right, so we're gonna stir in the cilantro. So I'm gonna try to get it as fine as I can. Boom, we're living. We're living large and in charge. So we're gonna let this simmer. We've come to the final stretch here. We got our salsa. We got a curtido chilling. Our beans have been refried. The masa has been sitting around, you know what I'm saying, combobulating, you know, theorizing. We gotta make our filling. I've got some chicharron, some red bell pepper, some tomato, and some onion. And we're just gonna puree that together. All right, bell, all right? We got some chicharron, you know, the old school. Add that flavor in there. It's gonna kinda crunch it up. And then we're going to puree this, all right? So, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to add flavor to, you know, what's a, what's a really traditional filling for pupusas, which is beans and cheese. So we're gonna puree the beans just to make sure that they're as creamy as possible. And we got creamy beans, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, we're gonna combine our fillings here, add this mixture. All right, so we're gonna fold this in. All right, so we're gonna get the cheese cubed up. That's nice, and you know what? Can't cut cheese without eating cheese. We got cheese chunks. All right, look at that, that's nice, oh yeah. All right, the time has come. All right, we done all this stuff. I've been here for hours. I got a little grasa here, all right, a little, little lard. All right, we're gonna hit this on the cast iron. You can use vegetable oil or whatever. So we got that heating up, medium heat. If your masa dough dries out, just add a little water to it. So we're gonna take a little bit of our dough, all right, hands are a little bit moist. All right, we're gonna roll into a ball. All right, so we're gonna flatten that ball out just a little bit, and we're gonna let that rest under a moist kitchen towel so that it doesn't dry out. Get a little oil on the hands, and to fill it, 
All right, we'll make kind of like a little, a little crater here. All right, so we're gonna scoop some of our filling in, seal it up, all right? And if it tears a little bit, don't be afraid. We got a little dough, we can add a little more here to kind of patch that up, that's okay. We're gonna use our hands to just press it, and there we go. And we're gonna go straight on to the pan here. I'm gonna put one in, and I'm gonna keep working on these. All right, we got our cast iron on about medium heat. Flip it over here and we're looking for this nice crispy color there. If it cooks on the outside too fast, then the inside and the cheese won't melt. Take your time, you don't wanna scorch the outsides. You wanna get just the right amount of color on there. I think our first one's good. Oh yeah, that's nice there, look, look at this. Look at that color, I like that. The salsa that we made, we're gonna add the salsa right here. Woo! I'm about to eat, I don't know about y'all. We're gonna grab some of this. Curtido. And so what I like to do with the pupusa, I like to take a little bit of this and just put it on top, get some salsa on there, and then just rip it up and see what happens. Oh yeah. This is what they call pupusa heaven. Mm. Mm. Ah. The curtido has an acidity level that is phenomenal. The carrots, cabbage, the peppers, it's a little tangy. And the salsa itself has a little spice, but not too much of a kick that's gonna overpower you. The masa is, is suave, it's nice and smooth. The filling is creamy, it's cheesy. The addition of that chicharron paste, it just adds a little bit more umami in there. Mm. For the recipe, click below. You already know, go watch your boy's TV show. Holla at your boy. <laughs> Woo, we grubbing. <laughs>